Welcome back to another episode of Next Level Minds. Today we have a good friend of mine, Houston McNair, on the podcast. We're actually from the same hometown. Houston has a great, interesting story, and it's funny how we connected for this episode. We actually ended up connecting over LinkedIn through a quick little comment. I um, find that pretty hilarious. Anyway, Houston today is going to be talking about a great transition from high school to college to career accomplishments to actually working his way up to a managerial position. And I promise you this episode is going to have some just next level value that I promise each and every one of you are really going to get um, some great descriptions from. So looking forward to hearing what Houston has to say on this episode. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Next Level Minds. Houston, uh, great to have you out here. Um, you know, based on that introduction that I just mentioned, uh, what would you like your listeners to know about you today? I appreciate it. I'm on Chris, man. This is cool we could get this whole thing going like this. Um, yeah, I came to Chris with an idea a couple weeks ago, I guess it was. Um, Texted him and told him, you know, I saw you had a podcast and follow him on Instagram, obviously, and saw all the stuff he was putting out there, and I was really vibing on it, and I was like, listen, man, I feel like I have like a Maybe a little little something I could add that maybe you're not thinking about or not hitting on, and you know we met up for happy hour a couple weeks or now I guess it was last yeah. week, yeah. And uh, you like what I said, so I mean here we are. Mm, hundred percent. It's funny how things connect like that too, you know. Um, so based on you know all that um, from high school to college to obviously working in your career, would you mind just touching base on that uh, that whole transition start from high school, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you want me to get in depth with it, or yeah, just take it how you want. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, I went to high school together, and we were we were just like any typical high school kids, just a couple of goobers. Yep. Um, but uh, but no, I, I mean, I didn't really take high school that seriously as I feel like a lot of people do. Um, and you know, your parents always preach to you how important it is to do well in high school, and. And you just brush it off your shoulder. I feel like a lot of people do. I know I did. Mm-hmm. And uh, it comes back to bite you in the ass a little bit. And um, it's not to say that you still can't be successful if you want to get into college or, or go into a trade school or just go right into the workforce, you know, out of, out of high school. But I think there's definitely more work to be done depending on what you want to do. Um, I know for me it was a struggle getting into college. I knew I was smart enough to to succeed in college, but I knew that, you know, I'm not a I'm not a very good test taker, mm. so that was definitely my weak point. Um, I knew I wanted to go to the Citadel, to to college, which is, I'm sure some of your listeners don't know what that is, but it's a military school in in Charleston. Um, it's not particularly difficult to get into. It's one of those colleges that's hard to stay in. Um, but I, yeah, I remember meeting with my guidance counselor when I was in high school. I think it was a junior or senior, maybe. And she told me, it was, it was my mom and myself in, in the guidance counselor's office, and she told me that I would have, with my test scores and my GPA, I would have no chance of making it into a technical school, let alone a four-year college. So it kind of hit me hard, but, you know, being 17, 18, I was like, this lady doesn't know what she's talking about. I know more than everybody. I don't really care what she has to say. So, applied to the Citadel, um, never heard anything, never heard anything. They give you, basically when you apply, you, um, they give you an admissions officer. I don't know what other schools call it, but it's basically like your, your like liaison yeah. to get into the school, whatever. They kind of help you coordinate things, answer questions you have, stuff like that. And anyway, so I would go and visit him probably once a week because I knew I wanted to get into school bad. And uh, I knew it was going to be a struggle for me because obviously my test scores, I think I had like an 850 or 900 on the SAT. Mm, I was in the same boat. Yeah, and I took it three times, had a prep course that I took that was weeks long, and I took that three times, and I spent all this money to go and get my SAT scores higher, and I think I improved them by like 20 points or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I would go and, and knock on my admissions officer's door about once a week, and just try to annoy him to death until I got into the school. And um, so I thought I was in, 
And I had actually, we went to high school with another girl whose dad was the vice president of the school. And I met with him, and I was like, you know, now for sure I'm in. Right. 100% I'm in. If I don't get in, I am absolutely shocked. <laughs> so I ended up meeting with my admissions officer one week, and he told me that I had been waitlisted to the school. So I remember leaving from there, and uh, I remember calling my mom on the way home, and I was just sobbing. I was mm-hmm. just crying. This was the only place I wanted to go to school. Right. So, but that's kind of one of those moments in time where you've got to realize to yourself that you're now about to enter the real world mm. and things are not always going to go your way and the real world's a bitch. So, I still kept going every week. My parents were like, you got to keep going every week. You can't, you can't just let up. You can't give up. Right. You got to show me one at bad. So I would still go every week, call them on the phone if I couldn't make it there in person. And anyway, everybody was, you know, having their plans to go off to college and getting their dorms set up and stuff like that. And it was like mid to late July. Mm-hmm. And then I finally heard back. I didn't even get a letter yet from the school. And I had gotten um, a phone call from my admissions officer. And he told me that they were accepting me into the school. And the only reason I was being accepted was my persistence and the initiative that I had shown to them mm. on how bad I wanted to get in school. So, anyway, went to school. Um, first couple years were a little rough, kind of, you know, that transitional phase from high school into college and figuring out how assignments work and balancing what little social life you have there yeah. with coursework and you know, if you want to have a girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, and then, um, so junior year, I really kicked it into gear, and that's when I decided that, you know, I want to, I really want to start doing well in college. Not to say I wasn't doing poorly, but, you know, I was just middle of the road average. Yeah. Nothing special, and I was like, you know, I want to start getting these good internships. I want to, I want to be able to set myself up right for a good job when I graduate, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that unless I had a good GPA, Mm. right? So I was, I was involved and a lot of extracurriculars. I mean, I was involved in different organizations, clubs, and uh, I was a captain of one of the intramural teams and stuff like that. But, you know, it's not like I was being lazy or anything. But, um, yeah. So, so uh, ended up getting Dean's List, I guess, my first semester junior year, whatever. Got it again, you know, second semester junior year. And then, and then senior year, I ended up graduating... My whole senior year, I had a four zero, and I made a president's list, which was above dean's list. It was like the top 10% in the school make it or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the criteria was to get it or to, to have it, but it was like, I, I want to say like the top 10% in the whole school. So, I remember when I got that, um, I was like, man, I, I remember what my guidance counselor told me <laughs> when I was in high school. Yep. And um, I was like, man, I showed her, you know? Right. But... It was kind of cool because I went back to my admissions officer who still worked there at the time. And uh, I told him, you know, I appreciate you taking a, a chance on me because I just, you know, I'm graduating now mm. and I'm on president's list. And so that was that was pretty cool. And it's kind of funny. I don't know if I said this to you the other night when we were talking, but yeah, um, my girlfriend and I were out to dinner mm-hmm. uh, probably, I want to say about a month ago. And my guidance counselor from high school was sitting like three tables over from us. Uh, and my girlfriend knows the whole story. And yep. she was like, do you want to go say like hi to her or anything? Because I'm, I'm so, I, you know, I keep in touch with a lot of my high school teachers and, and whatnot. And I was like, I don't, I don't have anything to say to her. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure she was doing her job, but right. she was not, it wasn't that she wasn't helpful, but she was not very uh, right. motivating to say the least. Right. A lot so of, no, I don't have anything to say to yeah, people who don't motivate no you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, I think it's it's one of those things like that transition between high school and college. Like, it's difficult. I don't care where you go to school. Yeah. Right. And I think persistence is key in anything you do. Right. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. So so let's sit here for a second with with that transition when you first got those news from your guys' concert. Obviously, you're pretty upset. Yeah. Through that situation. How did you react when, you know, it came time to all your friends and, you know, both our, all our friends getting into dorms, setting up yeah. everything, like, and you didn't even have an acceptance letter yet? 
How but, did you really keep that persistence going, not letting all that get to your head? Because yeah. it's hard not to compare yourself Well, I mean, others. yeah, I mean, I think it's important to have a plan B with anything you do. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was prepared to, like, go to a technical school for a year mm. and then try to transfer into, yeah. you know, either the Citadel or somewhere else that I wanted to go. Mm. So I was not going to accept no for an answer. But, you know, maybe I was just going to be a little bit delayed in my, my plan that I had. Yeah. So. When, uh... Obviously, you weren't going to accept no through that time where you were calling the Citadel. You know, I could be considered like cold calling, right? Um, knocking on the door. Yeah. Just get in touch with them. Definitely. Was there any moments where you're like, just like really wanted to give up, but you just kept pushing through with the persistence? Or was it always like high energy? I can do this. I got this. Or I mean, I had some backup schools that I wanted to go to. Yeah. Not, not go to, but that I got into, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah. Like some, you know, SEC party school, mm. like Mississippi State and like Alabama and stuff like that. Yeah, and I was like, I could easily, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, no, I was like, I, that's just, that's average. I don't want to be average, you know, because mm. I, I knew there was a point in time that, um, you know, come graduation that you take these average schools, like the ones that I'm particularly speaking about. Yep. Or you take the Citadel and, at least where we're from, people know what the Citadel is. So right. this really applies to, to what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. is that um, you've got to do something that's going to separate yourself from everybody else mm. when you want to start your job search yep. or you know that you're looking for an internship or something. So that was the main reason I wanted to go. Yeah. And I wanted to go so bad that I knew I would not take no for an answer. It did not matter what, what the circumstances were. Mm-hmm. They they could have said they could have said you're not getting in this year, but they never said that they were never going to say that you will not get in. Period. Yeah. So Good. that that was kind of the mindset I had going into the whole process. Right. Who was during this time, if any, who was really your main supporters during this? Um, I mean, I would say family, mm-hmm. family, and like my girlfriend at the time. Yep. Um, but I think it's. It's very important to have a strong support system. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's important to surround yourself with, you know, your family always is going to care about you and, and want the best for you, but it's really important to have friends who want to see you succeed. Yeah. So I would say that those are probably the two biggest groups. Mm-hmm. And I would even, I would lump girlfriend with friends. Right. At least at the high school level. Oh, because, yeah, you know, Definitely. It's probably not going to be that serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, at the time, you think it's very Oh, serious. yeah. At the time, you think you're going to get married and oh, have a nice yeah. house and stuff. And then, like, two years down the road, you're like, nah. Wow, what's going on? <laughs> nah, college is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To- totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. So, obviously, when you're at the Citadel, I know you mentioned you pretty much kind of kicked into the high gear junior year. Um, was that kind of a hard transition? Because I know it really was for myself from not really caring as much from all of high school not really freshman year, not sophomore year. Was that a hard transition to actually just, you know, go fifth gear right off the bat? Um, I don't know. I think there's a point in time where you got to recognize, I'm sorry, when you got to realize mm-hmm. um, with yourself that, like, you're not giving max effort. Mm. You're probably not even giving three-quarters effort. Yeah. And for me personally, I got complacent with where I was mm. to know that I could just skate by. And probably find a job eventually. But then I was like, if I have the opportunity to, to do really well for myself, I'm already here. I already have to go to class. Why not just do it? Right. That was the that was the biggest thing for me. Mm. So I don't I don't think it looking back at it, I don't think it was that difficult. But I'm sure when I was, you know, I'm sure if you would have asked me during the process or right in the beginning or right before <laughs> I would have probably said, man, this is going to suck. Yeah, you're chugging coffee all day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, I lived off of caffeine and nicotine. Uh-huh. So. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So <clears throat> within that period, um, was there any time that you felt like giving up and, and being complacent? Or was it, did you just have a flip of a switch? Where, okay, I want to be great. I would say it was a flip of a switch. Okay. Um, which is really not characteristic of myself. But, mm. yeah, I don't, I don't know what it was. I'm going to go back and say again that it was me wanting to get a good job yeah. coming out of college. Yeah. What um what advice did you have for, for people out there who are maybe in their transitional years of college um, and are starting to get a little complacent, 
you know, what, what advice would you have to maybe flip that into gear? Because I kind of went through that same boat myself. Yeah. I, I don't really know what it was, but it just kind of happened. So like, yeah. I would say, here, here's the thing, is that I think that um, networking events in college are important to go to. Mm. I, I can't, I, honestly, I think they're imperative um, to your success, post-grad life. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've got to set yourself up for that. So if you want to get complacent, that's fine. But you've got to, you have to constantly build your resume mm. while you're in college. That way when the opportunity comes, because you don't know when it's going to come, you don't know who you can meet at any point in time right. who's going to give you a job offer or any networking event that says, I'd like to pass your resume on to so-and-so. And if you're just average Josh Mount, people, people, people know. Yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah, totally, totally, totally. And they can also tell on the flip side when you're not average and you're actually great because all the stuff you've actually yeah. been involved in. And then touching on those networking events, is it how does that introduction really look? I guess more for like business type of careers. How does it just going up cold introducing yourself or what was your strategy with that? Yeah, so I was actually the president and vice president of a couple clubs. Mm. Um, typically, they... they, they had to deal with supply chain management because that's what I was majoring in. That's what I wanted to get into. That's what mm -hmm. I'm in now. Um, but yeah, so there was a lot of functions and stuff that we would go to for that. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't really like going up to people just, you know, shaking hands, trying to introduce myself. I mean, it was, but it wasn't like an awkward situation is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, networking functions that were easygoing and... Mm. You know, typically everybody in the industry I work with is very um, outgoing and easy to talk to mm -hmm. and very personable. So, yeah, I mean, I recommend get into as many networking. Look for networking clubs before you look for anything, in my opinion. I'm sure you would probably agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, when I was at Clemson, I was driving up to Greenville multiple times a month. Yeah. There's not really much in Clemson. It's pretty much just a college. Yep. But, um, yeah, same thing. I mean, just... Introducing yourself, I'd, uh, I wouldn't really have like a salesy pitch, right? But I would just kind of say, hey, this is what I do. This is what I'm really looking for. Um, get to know them and then say, hey, like, how can I help you and how can you help me? Yeah. Because I think it's adding value on both ends, right? Right, right. Because you don't want to be that kid, like, can you help me find a job? Because it's like, dude, get in line, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and I think that's one of the, one of the, goes back to one of the things we were talking about the other night. I was, mm. I think you said something like, it's all about who you know. And I was like, no, it's all about who knows you. Mm, yeah, that's true. You did flip the switch. That's, that's yeah. so true. Cause we're talking about all the personal yeah. brand stuff. Give you the spin zone. Yeah, <laughs> my brain was a little discombobulated <laughs> yeah. after that one. Um, so just to summarize these points, I actually wanted to move on to more of your uh, career now, but summarizing all, everything with college, um, I think the main thing I got from it, our, our listeners might have got um, as well, is, is just persistence is key through right. this, um, as well as from that transition of don't be complacent, set yourself apart, Obviously, go to networking events. That's imperative. Anything else on the summarization right there? No, nah, I mean, I, I, I pretty much hit it from that, you know, high school to college yeah. segment. Yeah, so, and then you found your job. Was it through a networking event then? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah, so actually, um, I actually was at my uncle's house. Mm. Well, I, I'll start off with it. Like, can I speak on the rejection of oh, the job yeah, first? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, we all I, this is my favorite part. This is like fuel of the fire for me. So, yeah, <laughs> um, apply, like, Went to college, went to the Citadel, thought I was going to have people like banging down my door, yeah. my college dorm to <laughs> say, come, come work for us, please. But no, it was not like that at all. Mm. Um, applied for companies like Gulfstream Aerospace. That was like my dream job that I wanted to go right. and work for them and, and talk to um, like some higher ups with them at a lot of networking events. They have a lot of Citadel graduates that work there. And... Uh, yeah, and I remember actually meeting at a network event. Um, the vice president of engineering for the company, I don't want to get into engineering, but I was like, you know, I mean, this is somebody who mm -hmm. could definitely pass my resume on to the right person. So I met his daughter and, um, and him at a networking event and exchanged business cards and hit him up on an email like two days later um, and was like, you know, I really appreciate uh, you you know, speaking to me about, you know, potential job offers, whatever. It was a pleasure to meet you and your daughter, yada, yada, yada. I threw that daughter line in there, and I was mm -hmm. like, dude, I'm, I'm in. I'm <laughs> in, you know. And uh, 
this was like my second or third time applying to, this was my third time applying to Gulfstream because I applied for two internships before that. And I didn't get that job. I didn't get any internship, no job with them or anything like that. Um, Boeing, another great example. Yeah, yep. uh, Honda, I interviewed with Honda like four times and didn't get a job offer. Um, and then I had a couple interviews with John Deere, but then I took the job I have now and told John Deere that, you know, I've accepted a job, so I appreciate it, but no thank you. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, so back to what you were saying. Um, met my uncle's neighbor at Thanksgiving mm. two years ago and talked to him, told him I was in college and what I was studying. He was like, well, have you thought about, you know, getting into this type of, you know, line of work? And um, I said, no, I haven't thought about it. And he was like, well, check us out, apply, and then call me next week. So I did all those things, and uh, next thing you know, I had an interview, and went through another interview, and then a month later went through another interview, and then finally got a job offer. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't. It goes all back to networking, even though it was on a very small yeah, scale. Yeah, so you're networking now. But I'm just saying, like it's yeah, it's, it is networking by definition. Yeah. How uh, how did you get through that rejection of finding a job? Because I know a lot of kids sometimes they just get rejected once, like oh, I'll just move back home, figure it out. So yeah, how did you, you got to use that as that? I see. Me personally, I use it as fuel, mm. fuel the fire with that. The way here, I this is what I always just tell myself mm -hmm. is that I wanted to work for Gulfstream or Boeing or John Deere or Honda so bad that whoever who whoever hires me and takes a chance on me, I'm gonna make Gulfstream regret. Not hiring me, mm. and they'll probably never know who I am. Yeah, which is fine, but I'm gonna know, you know, myself. Right. That they're gonna wish they hired me. Right. The value and that's the kind of attitude I go work with every day. Yeah. So, what's your uh, what's your career looking like currently? Obviously, you, you didn't take the job at John Deere. Right. You're, you're somewhere else now. So, like, what's that transition look? Yeah. Like? So basically, I work for a trucking company. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a trucking company. Right. Um, we do a lot of stuff with construction materials. Uh huh. Um, we're headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And we do a lot of roadway work, high rise work. Mm -hmm. Um, your apartment where we're recording this from right now was, yeah. You know, thanks to us. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm over, uh, currently over 21 people. Okay. Um, I've got 17 drivers and three production employees mm. underneath myself. Um, so yeah, it's the busiest facility in the company. Wow. Um, but I actually just got moved today to a different department that okay. I have to learn real quick before I move back to Charleston because I'm taking some stuff over in Charleston mm. because we're currently expanding down there. So they were like, you know, you're from there. We want you to be able to kind of drive the product down there a little bit while we expand. So I agreed to take that on and looking forward to that, that new uh, challenge. Yeah. How uh, how'd you get into a managerial role so quick? I know it's, sometimes it takes people four or five years. Yeah, so honestly, I, I it's I got very fortunate mm -hmm. um, that I've been, um, you know, gotten in this line of work, and it's gifted me with the opportunity to hop into a managerial role. That I mean, there there's people in my company that's taken thirty five years to get to where I'm at. Wow. You know, now they start from the bottom. They don't have a college degree. Yeah, I'm not hating on that. College degree is not for everybody. You can do fine without a college degree. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying that is the, that's you know the equivalency of what you're looking at is a kid right out of a four year school, a few internships here and there. Okay, right into a managerial role or 35 years to get there. So uh, yeah, I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest salaried employee in my company. Wow. Is there any times where you're looked down upon essentially by any Oh yeah, I get a lot of or... I get a lot of kickback because I'm 23 and I look like I'm 18 and I manage a bunch of people who have been with the company for 20 years and some of them are you know 50 years old that know everything better than I do. Yeah. And they do know a lot more than me, but yeah, that's that's why I get the kickback. How do you deal with that? 
Uh, I think it is very important as when you're in, when you're in a leadership role. I don't even like using the word manager that much. It just I, I don't know. I don't get a warm fuzzy about the word manager. Yeah, I like leader better. Right. But at a young like being a 23 year old, I think the type of leader that these these people want to see nowadays. They want somebody that, that will listen to them, that will take their input. Um, that shows that they're appreciated. I'm talking about you know my subordinates, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. Being a servant leader, mm. you know, working for your employees, um, leading by example. That's the easiest type of leadership, right there. I don't care, you know, if you're sweeping the floors of a company or you're the CEO of a company. Lead by example is not hard to do, mm. and it's the most recognizable leadership. Mm. But yeah, so that, that, yeah. What was that? You tied me on LinkedIn the other day and you actually said this. Was it never be above the work, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you want to touch on that? I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Chris and I went to happy hour yeah. last week and he was just, you know, asking like some key points I want to talk about. And I was like, man, I love this slogan of, you know, never be above the work. And uh, I guess it was like on Monday. Um, Somebody shared on, I got on my LinkedIn feed, it was like the CEO of JetBlue was on some flight or something like that. Yeah. And he like walked down the aisle like flight attendants do with a trash bag trying to collect trash. Mm-hmm. And somebody had taken a picture or video of it or something like that and was like, can't believe the CEO of JetBlue is on my plane collecting trash. And so I tagged Chris in and I was like, what did I tell you? Never be above the work. Mm. No, there's no job too little for the CEO of a company. Yeah, that's, and that goes back to leading by example too. Yeah, you know, I'm sure those flight attendants really saw a lot of value from that. Um, <clears throat> so, with your role right now, I mean, what's what's next that you want people to know about? I know you're going to Charleston in a couple, about like a month from now, right? Yeah, yeah. Other than that, I mean, are you moving any new positions or what's what's next yeah. on your plate? Yeah, so I'm going to be a plant manager. Okay. That's essentially what I am now, um, but. You know, in Charleston, like I said, we're headquartered here. So there's no lifelines down there. So I'm pretty nervous about that. Mm. Um, but it's a challenge. I mean, that's why I love my job so much. It's just a challenge every single day. And I actually uh, met, had breakfast with the president of our company last Tuesday. And he asked me, he was like, so what is, you know, you've been here for a year. What's your favorite part about this job? And I was like, honestly, like I'm not in sales so I'm, it's not the product we're pushing that I'm all crazy about. Mm-hmm. I said it's the challenge I have every day with my employees. The challenge of motivating people. That's what I like to do. And I think that's what it's all about. Is that you got to create challenge for yourself because if you get, like I'm going back to getting complacent. I know this is probably not even the question you just asked me. I'm getting off on a tangent yeah. right here. But uh, challenge is what helps you grow. I mean, that's that's no secret. So I think that, that is imperative to find in a job. If you're not challenged every day, you're not helping yourself grow. You're not helping yourself grow into another position. If you want to make a move laterally to a better position, you're not. It's it's going to be difficult. You're gonna you're you might get the job, but you're going to be, you know, treading water when you get there. Mm. And that goes back to getting complacent, right? Yeah, yeah, huh? So that seems like a lot. So what, of, I'm sorry. What was what was the question? No, you no, asked no me you went, I love that you went off on a tangent. That's that's what that's what this podcast. You, you is haven't for. got me heated yet. <laughs> well, that's that's always good. Um, so so based on all that, I mean, it sounds like you've had an interesting story from from high school to college to graduating to actually managing a group of what is it twenty twenty three people, right? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be twenty three tomorrow. I bet, bet you'll get yep. two more employees. Yep. 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 Um, What's some just final advice out there, you know, go, even going on another tangent that uh, you think people could, could really get a value add from just from, from all ages, especially people ourselves that just graduated. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you could add. What, what's good advice just in yeah, general? Yeah, just some final ending advice. That you uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I could go so many different directions with this. Mm. Um, just I guess kind of building off what we're talking about is, I don't know, maybe I could just hit some key points. I think, yeah. again, networking. Mm-hmm. Even when you get to where you're going, let's say you get a job, dream job, there are still networking events that you could go to. Wherever you live, 
find some type of networking group that does things once a month or you know has luncheons or something like that because you know for your personal growth you're you're you you're not chances are you're not going to stay your entire lifetime with your company so if you want to move into something else you know network right help your personal growth whatever you want to get into mm -hmm. um what was i talking about friendships the other day Oh yeah. About keeping you motivated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um from personal experience. Yeah. I think I had some pretty I had I had you know I I've I have a lot of good friends that I thought had their you know, my best interests um in their minds, you know, in regards to me wanting to be you know as a friend you should want your close friends to be to grow successful. To yep. Right. Yep. But I think just because you have a best friend or a really good friend, they're not always going to be like that. So be mindful of that, right? They might want you to be successful, but not more successful than them. Mm. That's what I kind of fell into. Yeah, jealousy, jealousy yeah. too. Right? I mean, this is just this might pertain to one person who ends up listening to this, but yeah, not to get all cliche. But I mean, if this reaches one person, then awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's really what we're here for. Yeah. Is there, um, touching on this, so I know you touched on personal growth, is there any books you're reading right now or any books you'd recommend? Yeah. Um, some people call him like a Ponzi scheme type dude, but uh, Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody sees him on Instagram. I've been following him for years now. But uh, he came out with this book called The 10X Rule. And again, I'm not in sales, but you can apply this rule that he talks about to anything. It's very similar to the, like, you know, uh, reach for the moon because the worst you can do is hit the stars mm. type mentality. Yep. Works for me. I love it. So you might want to check that out. I just bought, um, what is that? It's, I think it's a book called Unstoppable by Tony Robbins. Oh, yep. Yeah. I mean, it's more of like, I don't want to say self help, but you know, just keeping like the right mindset. So I haven't started that one yet, but I'm really looking forward to okay. it. Okay. Hmm. Um, so yeah. What's just a proactive measure? You know, let's say someone's listening to this on a Monday morning that uh, someone can take with their mindset, just to get it in the right place to start their school week, work week, etc. Off. Yeah. So what I tell myself every day when I go into work, yep, is that this might be my la I might get fired tomorrow. Hmm. So I'm about to work so damn hard, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell myself that this is my last day at work until I get fired because I'm not doing a good enough job. And I keep that mentality every day. It's the first thing I tell myself before I get out of my truck to get into the office. So yeah, that's how, that's that's how I keep the wheels rolling at work. I love that. I love that. Even in a, it's intense, but I, yeah, I, I mean, that is different intense. strokes for different folks. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that that's that is intense. So some people just write down like I'll, I'll do good today, but you're like I could get fired. Yeah, you know, hype yourself up that you could. way. You, yeah, you really could. I mean, even even worse than that, you could, you could die. Honestly, yeah. When you get system. complacent, you will lose your job. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, anything else you'd like to add before, before we close up? Nah, man, I just appreciate you having me on here. I, I hope I wasn't all over the place on, oh, on no. the podcast, and I was I was making you know good sentences for everybody. Yeah, everyone's got a little bit of ADHD. Yeah, I, yeah, I talk in circles a little uh -huh. bit, so. Yep, so guys, thanks for really listening um, to another episode of Next Level Minds. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, just listen to you know Houston's transition from high school to college to the real world, um, really on how he's grown. Just some value adds I got from this, and I'm sure you did too. It's just always network, never be complacent, and really just wake up. One thing at the end was just, hey, wake up and know today could be your last day at work, so make sure you just go into it with the right attitude. Um, Houston, where's probably the best place to reach you if, if anyone had actually had any personal questions for you? I mean, yeah, I mean, holler at me on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, Houston McNair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. it's probably the best place. I'm real active on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hey, guys, thanks again for listening and tuning in to another episode of Next Level Minds. As we like to say here, your mindset is your greatest weapon against the battle of success, and we'll be back again with another episode coming soon. Thanks again. 